Right then, what we're looking at here is a David Ellison CBX five string bass. It's in Quicksilver. Um, this is one of the imports, which is made in India. I have to say, overall, I've been very impressed with this. I picked it up for a bargain, £120, which works out about $180 US. It is second hand, but as you can see, it's overall in pretty good condition. The tuners, starting at this top end, are Jackson's own, and they're pretty solid, to be fair. There's not a huge amount of slack in them. They seem to hold tune pretty well. They're easy enough to string with, and they lock the string in nicely without having too much slippage. On this one, admittedly, just because I was trying things out, it's got the Warwick red strings on, which I've got a pack here, which are pretty cheap in the UK, phenomenally cheap for bass strings. I paid about £8 for these from DV24. Uh, the gauge that I've got in is 45 at the top and then 135 at the bottom, which is actually slightly heavier than Mr. Ellison himself uses, which I believe is 40 to 128. Um, the base is maple necked, as you can see, rosewood fretboard. This is the bolt on version rather than the custom shop that you can get, the RIP base, which is neck through. Um, it has the active EQ, hence it's got the small cavity here, and then obviously the big cavity on the back is for your control section. Um, if memory serves correctly, it's an older body, and I have to say, overall, I've been really impressed with this base, particularly for the price. So, pickups, we've got the EMG HZ base pickups in there. Um, and I believe it's a Jackson own bridge rather than I think the hip shot which the custom shop comes with. So we've got an overall volume. We have a blend control for the two pickups. These four controls are all notched in the middle so you can have neck, bridge, or it'll actually sit in place and lock in for uh, a perfect balance of the two. This is your active EQ controls. And these, for me, are what really bring this bass to life. Um, so much so that we'll start off at one volume, then I'm actually going to have to reduce the input to stop it going over the top because you'll see there's such a big difference in volume. Um, on the EQ, we have bass, we have middle, we have treble. And as you can see, it's got... So you can subtract bass. It will sit in the middle there, which is basically making no difference or you can add bass in. And that's the same with all of these. So first of all, <clears throat> let's hear a bit of a pick tone. So now you're looking at the blend control, we've got middle. We can now go to the bridge pickup, which should give us bit more of a thinner sound, bit more punchy, bit more cutting. And then we can go to the neck pickup. But I have to say, overall for me, I quite like the balance of the mid. The neck pickup's got a real nice punchy, rumbly low end to give the thickness, and the bridge has a nice cut to it, so that balance works well for, for what I'm looking for. Now, the next part is where, for me, this bass really starts to get interesting. So let's have a look at the EQ controls. Um, we've got the three of them. We have treble middle bass. So first of all, we'll start with the treble. So we have the neutral position. Just making sure all the others are central. That's the basic sound of mixed pickups, full volume, no extra or taken away EQ. So first of all, let's add. So there's your added treble, neutral. And then finally, taken away.
which I have to say I like the fact that you can do that it really changes the sound of this bass so now we look at the middle neutral added and then subtracted And then finally we move on to the bass. Now those first two make about two decibel different, either plus or minus, depending which way you go. Finally, the bass control makes a huge difference to this one, to the point where um, when we add the EQ, we'll actually end up having to subtract some of it or subtract some volume to make sure I don't clear. So first of all, here's neutral. Here's subtracted. And then finally, here's added. I'm actually going to put in a 4 decibel reduction on the uh, input, or the output, I should say, to make sure we don't clip. So if we add all three, I'm actually going to put in a 7 decibel reduction now So for me, I think this is a very versatile bass, certainly for the amount of money I've paid for it, which is, um, as I say, £120 second hand. Um, it's got some real nice features with the binding, with the perloid pieces put in the neck. The RIP bass, uh, £3,500 is a much, much better instrument, but this cost me £120 second hand and retails currently for just under £500 in the UK. Um, I think it did start out slightly above that, but way it's still available, you're only talking for £500, which I think is a real bargain for the, the flexibility of this base.